Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In the previous two uh, videos, we've been really focused on uh, accessing objects from outside of our container. We started with accessing non-container schemas, such as ERP, BW, CRM systems. And then in the last exercise, we saw how we could access a HDI container, but one that exists in our own project. Now, what we want to do is we want to uh, branch out beyond that and talk about accessing other HDI containers, but ones that aren't part of our project. And as I said in the previous exercise, this is probably the more common or realistic scenario. Uh, not realistic, but more common is a better way of saying it. Um, because you should definitely modularize your, um, your developments into multiple projects, separate them however you want, logically, by business, by uh, abstraction layer, or, or whatever, but you should definitely have more than one project. Um, and you should only create multiple containers within a, a single project when you really have tables that are related to each other and belong to the same application, but you just need to separate them maybe for security uh, concerns. More likely is that you want to reuse objects from outside your project, such as other views. Uh, one development team creates a calculation view and you want to use it in your own project to build on top of. Or maybe you've got a separate container that has master data views that are shared by many different projects. Uh, maybe you create a layered approach where you have base views and, and then maybe consumption views and external views and all those are in separate projects. And in all those scenarios, you're going to do the same kind of cross-container concepts of creating the synonym and the grantors, but you're going to need to do it um, using uh, some of the earlier techniques we saw with the um, uh, with the ability to connect up and, and grant access. And it's not going to be quite as simple because we're not going to have the trusted relationship between the containers that are part of the same project. So there's a little bit more in, involved here. Um, and for this purpose, uh, we've already pre-created another container uh, and installed it onto this system. Um, I will put in the show notes links to where you can go get that other container and how to install it onto your system if you want to uh, recreate this exercise. It's not a, it's not a very big container. Let's, uh, let's just switch over to the web ID and let's come over here and have a look at it. Uh, so I've already, I've already deployed this to the system. Uh, not built it from the web ID, but actually packaged it and deployed it. It's fully installed. Um, uh, like I said, we'll talk about how you how you do that sort of thing uh, later. But but right here, this open SAP Central DB container. Uh, let's just go ahead and add it into the database explorer so we can we can have a look at it. Uh, what I've prepared over here are some tables uh, with countries, uh, country codes, the ISO codes for countries. Let's just have a look at that. So all the countries, all the codes and regions. Um, same thing for all the currencies. So we'll look at that. Uh, all the world's currencies and then all the subdivisions there of uh, like regions. All right, so all that data is um, is there and you can imagine well that's not very project specific it's not very application specific or application area you know i also have some views here that help pull these out like i can get just the, the united states um like maybe we come here and look at that data maybe i want to create an application that has a drop down list box that has all the states in it i don't want to create that over and over again i don't want to create that in each project so I've created that centrally in one nice reusable container, and I can just access that from all my other projects. Not copy it in, not, not repeat the data or anything like that. Uh, have it once in a, in a shared container. So that's a, I think that's a good use case. I mean, all of us have master data of some sort, you know, customer data, um, you know, whatever it is that, that could serve a, a very similar purpose. Well, what we want to do now is we want to pull that in so we can use it in, in our existing project and, and access it in our, in our main uh, database container here. So we're going to start here with our DB module 
And we can use that same wizard that we used earlier to get access to S flight. We're going to use the add external SAP HANA service. It's external, even though it's HDI, it's still external because it's outside of our project. So I'll go ahead and choose that. But instead of non HDI container, we're going to say HDI container. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. It is a container. And uh, we're going to want to come here and choose the container. And, 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 you know, I know it's a deployed container because it doesn't have a username and the workspace gobbledygook in the name. You don't really want to be connecting to and developing against other people's private containers, their, their sandbox containers. You want the deployed real version of the container, which means installing your, your application, deploying your application, even onto the development system so that people have stable versions to work against. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to choose that. We're going to say OK. Once again, the wizard is going to do most of the work for us. Uh, we can see it here. It has gone into the MTA YAML, and it has added that as a resource. It's an existing service. It does not need to be created or managed by our project. We're just going to connect to it. There's the service name. We don't want to hard code or use that service name anywhere directly, so we're going to create an alias for that service name. And once again, it's also wired it into our database module. We come here and we scroll down. We see that it has added it as a dependency, and it has set up the key and service to add the alias to it. Okay, So it's done all that work for us. We don't have to do any of that by hand. We had to do some of that by hand when we, when we actually uh, added the resource from within our own project. Uh, the wizard takes care of that for us. Okay, But we still need uh, a grantor service. Uh, I'm sorry, we still need a grant, uh, HDB grants file, just like we did previously. So let's come here to the config folder, and let's create a new, uh, we'll just call this central, um, rather generic name, but that's what I named the container, uh, .hdb grants. All right, and I've got a little snippet prepared with the code. So 13a grab that snippet and it looks just like the other grants um, what service alias name do I want to use to perform the grants so to use the technical user of that service and what roles do I want to pull from that other service I actually have uh, I broke it up into two separate roles a, a basic consumption role with very limited access and then an admin role with the with grant op uh, option you can tell that because it has the pound signed on the end that I only give to the object owner. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that. Now we're going to need synonyms as well. So let's come down here to our synonym folder and let's create a new synonym. What are we going to call this? We're going to call this central as well. And then synonym. We'll create that. And, you know, we're going to create, we want several synonyms here. It's more than I want to type in. So I'm going to switch over to the code editor. And I've got a little code snippet for this. 13B. Because we're going to want access to uh, several different views and several different tables. So we're going to add them all here at once. That's good. We'll save that. And just like we did before with the local container i'm going to need a config file for this as well so i'm going to come here and i'm going to add a new file to the cfg folder i'm going to create a central hdb synonym config and i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to say open in code editor I've got a snippet prepared for this. Once again, just because there's several objects. Once again, I, I could have cut and pasted from the from this file over here. All the objects are the same, but we just need to add that grantor line to every item. Once again, not not an ideal design, but it's the way it works, and we have to deal with it for now. At least, uh, hopefully, we can maybe improve this process a bit in the future. Um, but you know, it's cut and paste for the most part. Yeah, I know it's kind of, kind of silly. Uh, 
silly work, um, but uh, it's what it, what we need to make it function properly for now. And make sure all our files are saved. And actually, I want to show you this. I, I mentioned earlier, if you don't have your files saved, uh, that you get uh, that you get a warning. Ah, I'm just so used to hitting save there. So I want to show you that now. Let's let's just take this opportunity to try to do this build with a dirty editor. And notice now you get this. Hey, you have unsaved changes. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to save them and then go ahead and build, or ignore and go ahead and build with the unsaved state? Uh, I'm going to say save and go ahead and build. And, oh, I got a error message. What did I get here? What did I mess up? Let me see. This is maybe a good opportunity to show you some of the, the things that we can use when we do have a problem. So I can go to the problems view. And let's see if it can extract out what the problem was. It can usually extract the error if it's an error in a specific file, but not the overall configuration. That's why I couldn't find anything for me there. So let's come here and let's have a look to see. Um, oh, uh, service instance or resource user DB already exist. No operation could be performed. That's a that's a little odd. I may have just um, uh, hit a bug here <laughs> in the uh, in the service provisioning. I don't know exactly why that would be the case here. One second, let me look at something else that I haven't showed you yet, which is the services panel. Maybe I had, oh, I know what I did. And this is also a good learning experience. I'm not going to cut this out of the video um, because this is a mistake that people make commonly. I've made it now as well. I had my cursor up here at the project level when I did my build. And when you perform a build, it's going to be relative to wherever you performed, uh, wherever the cursor is. And when you do a build at the project level, it tries to um, it just create a zip file of the entire project and, and export it so that it's ready to be transported into another system. And, and my project isn't in a state where it's, where it's ready to do that. And, and that's actually why I got that error. That's, that's actually a good thing that, that, I, that I screwed up um, because that's, an, uh, that's a common mistake that people make. And you can see it took me a couple seconds even being familiar uh, with the environment to, to realize what I had done. Um, uh, so, uh, so let's, uh, let's try this now at the right level. Let me come here and let's do a build at the DB level. And this time, because I have selected the, the correct level to do my build at, it was successful. So once again, yes, I made a mistake. Uh, sometimes when I make mistakes recording videos, I cut them out. But other times, if they're <coughs> valuable learning experiences, like I think this is, I go ahead and leave them in. So, uh, so sorry for making a mistake, but actually not sorry, because hopefully everybody learned a little something from that. Um, but now that it's successful, we have our synonyms. I, just like before, I can come over here to the Database Explorer. I can go to the Core DB, and I come here to Synonyms, and now I see all of these synonyms for currency and ISO currency, uh, U.S. states. So, for instance, I could come here. I can say Open Data, and now I'm seeing all my states. So this is, um, you know, I could build additional views on top of this. This is actually something that we're going to use a little bit later in in some of our our logic. Um, uh, but but it's ready for us to be able to use from inside of our project container.